back. I'm Kayla Rimbert with the Rimbert Blount Property Groups of Keller Williams Infinity based in the Chicagoland area. And I just wanted to answer a few questions that I've gotten from friends and family who are looking to buy their first home and they are wanting to know about lenders and how to vet a lender, who to go with, should I go and find a lender first or should I find a realtor first? So uh, first things first, I am obviously a licensed realtor, so I may be a little bit biased, but I would say find a realtor first. And that is because I am a lot of lenders offer different things. So for instance, even with Keller Williams, we have our own in-house lender, um, Keller Mortgage, which will give you, um, it's only if you work with Keller Williams agents, but it will lower your closing costs. They There's something that they're able to do that other lenders aren't, and then other lenders have specific programs or grants that they can give you. When you're talking to a lender, like if you were to go to even Keller Mortgage first, they might not tell you about how uh, Loan Depot or Guaranteed Rate or Wintrust can give you uh, this grant or they can offer you this in closing costs. They're not going to tell you about that, obviously, because that's their competitor. So as a realtor, I do have certain preferred lenders that I work really well with and that I've seen um, my clients rave about because I always ask, you know, how did you like that lender that I recommended you to just so that I can get feedback. So I have, uh, you know, people who are tried and true that I've worked with. So I am able to kind of give you a clearer picture um, and then tell you this person is able to give you this type of grant. This person is able to give you, usually can give you a better rate, you know, and it just, and it, it depends as well. So in my opinion, I would say going to a realtor first makes the most sense. However, I do have tons of clients who come to me already with a lender. And in that case, I am not like completely scrap the lender. I won't work with them. You know, I am happy to work with them, but I do suggest getting a second opinion because, um, and it doesn't even have to be with my preferred lender. If they have somebody else that they would like to use, getting a second opinion it's, it's just shopping around for anything. You want to get the best rate. You want to get with somebody again, who uh, is going to be, um, who is going to work well with everybody in the deal. So you want a lender who you feel comfortable talking to because you're going to talk to them a lot during this process. So you don't want to be with anybody who you aren't, you aren't going to feel comfortable picking up the phone and talking to. And that kind of leads me into my next point, which is that I, for instance, had a friend who recently came to me and she was like, oh my gosh, I've been looking at this house at some, she's like, I just want to go call Bank of America right now and get approved. And I was like, Oh, full stop. It really um, showed me that a lot of people are, it, it, it makes complete and total sense. A lot of people's first thought when they are going to go for a mortgage um, or get financed for a house that they would go to who they bank with, which makes complete sense. I bank with Bank of America, for instance. Um, my father, who I'm also in the business with, banks with Chase. We have both said that we would never, ever use them for a mortgage, for our own personal mortgage, because with banks, especially big banking institutions, such as, you know, the Bank of America's, the Chase's, the Wells Fargo, they don't just focus on mortgages. They obviously do, they can do your car loan. They can give you a personal loan, a bid, like, you know, they focus on so many other avenues that mortgage is not even the first thing on their plate. That's not their priority and that shows in how they deal with you. So, um, for instance, those whenever even I as a realtor, if I have a listing or if anybody on my team has a listing, when we see a big bank um, on a pre-approval letter, we get a little nervous. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call um, the realtor and ask if they have personally worked with that bank before. Have you worked with them? You know, how has your experience been? Then we're going to call the lender. Um, the first, the 
issue that I sometimes come across with the big banks is that they are not responsive because again, they have so many other things to do. And when you think about a big bank, think about their hours. Um, when you have to go, when I have to go to Bank of America, I can only go during really working hours and then a few hours on Saturday. And that's pretty much when I can get a hold of those people um, who are your lender, you know? Like, so when I'm trying to, when we are trying to make an offer work and it's obviously, when are we seeing houses? We're seeing houses usually at night or on the weekends. So when I'm trying to get an offer ready or trying to negotiate and work around a bank schedule, it makes things a lot harder. And something that I always do or recommend for my clients is getting a specific pre-approval letter for the home that you're going to go see, or I mean that you're going to put an offer on, excuse me. So that just so that it is tailor-made to that home, because for instance, let's say that you are pre-approved for 450 and this home is 350, but you still wanna make an offer on it. We don't want to show them that you can make an offer up to 450. Not that agents should take advantage of that because they shouldn't. However, it can happen. So I don't want them to know the full extent of your buying power for an offer that we're going to make. I want it to be the amount that we've written on the contract. And then if we need to go back and I want your pre-approval to have the amount that's written on the contract. If we need to go back, if we're in negotiations and we need to go up a little bit, then sure we can. And that's when I want to be working with a lender who's going to be responsive, who can get me those tailor-made pre-approval letters and who then can change it. Um, and not that your lender always has to be available to you 24 seven, they don't. Even as a realtor, I can't, if you call me at 2 a.m., your girl is asleep. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't, we can't always be available, but but um, something outside of eight to five on the weekdays and eight to 12 on the weekends is crucial. So they, uh, it is, they, it's, it's harder, it's harder because they don't have the availability that we need sometimes. So when I call a lender, if they don't answer or if they don't get right back to me, that's kind of a red flag. Um, unless they've said, you know, unless I know uh, I've, somebody in their office has gotten back to me or you know their voicemail might sometimes say I'm out contact this person that is always amazing to me I'm like yes please give me another point of contact um, during this time so there are some things that are beyond their control however if I if you're frequently hard to get in contact with that is an issue that's going to be an issue and then um, so what we will do is we'll call the realtor we'll call the lender and then Finally, we may ask if they have an offer, especially in this market, which is a seller's market still right now, at least we're in my marketplace in the Chicagoland area, we're still in a seller's market. So I may ask, can your, can your buyer get approved with a more reputable lender? And I mean, sometimes they'll say no, and that's okay, especially if we have other deals on the table. But if all things are equal and one buyer has a um, pre-approval from Chase and another one has a, a pre-approval from a lending institution that I have worked with before and that I really, for instance, can you tell I've had a bad experience with Chase? I keep bringing them up, but I, um, if I Bank of America and Chase, if I've seen something with you know that has a pre-approval with their with their name on it, and then a pre-approval with um, you know a, a institution that I've worked really well with, so for instance Loan Depot or Guaranteed Rate, I will go with Loan Depot or Guaranteed Rate because I know that I can get those people on the phone and I know that I've had a better experience with them in the past. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, if you have any questions about the lending process or other thing that other things that you should look for in a lender, um, besides responsiveness and also like again feeling comfortable with them and then a transparency um too you want somebody who's going to give you figures and numbers that are true and not some you know in the rates you want them to they can't always quote you until you they can't quote you on a rate until you have you're locked in um, and you start offering on homes, but you want somebody who's not gonna do a bait and switch on you. And that's when having 
works when you come to a realtor who you trust if you have a realtor that you trust and then they can put you in contact with a lender that they trust who they've used it makes a world of difference so please reach out to me if you have any questions my personal cell number is going to be below um, you can also reach me via email so text call email my website will also be there as well um, please let me know how else I can help have a good one